Fleet Flight Ready, the new system that's helping maintainers get broken aircraft back in the air. Plus, it's trained some of the fleet's finest for 70 years. The United States Naval Test Pilot School marks the big anniversary with a big change to the curriculum. And the wait is over for the F-35 Lightning II aircraft. The Marine Corps declares the F-35B warfighter ready. Welcome to this Year in Review edition of Airwaves. I'm Michael Lauren Pru. 2015 marked a milestone year for the F-35 Lightning II program. The F-35C Lightning II flexed its sea legs as it completed its first arrested landing aboard USS Dwight D. Eisenhower in October. The milestone event was the second of three at-sea developmental test phases for the carrier variant. The F-35's first developmental test at sea took place aboard USS Nimitz in 2014. Test teams from Naval Air Station Patuxent River used two F-35C aircraft to perform a variety of operational maneuvers, including multiple catapult takeoffs and arrested landings. The goal of the F-35's follow-on developmental test at sea was to further expand the F-35C's flight envelope and assess its ability to operate in a carrier environment. The data collected is preparing the aircraft for next year's final at-sea developmental test. The F-35C is scheduled to be delivered to the fleet in 2018. And the Marines are another step closer to fielding the F-35B short takeoff and vertical landing variant of the Joint Strike Fighter. The F-35B delivers a giant leap forward in combat capability for the Marine Corps tactical aviation community, enabling air power projection from amphibious ships, ski jump aircraft carriers, and expeditionary airfields. The Marine Corps declared the F-35B's initial operating capability status in July, an important step forward in a multi-year process to upgrading its aging fleet of fixed-wing tactical aircraft. The F-35B will replace the AV-8B Harrier and the EA-6B Prowler. And here's another exciting moment for naval aviation. In April, the Navy completed the first ever autonomous aerial refueling of an unmanned aircraft. While flying off the East Coast, the X-47 Bravo received over 4,000 pounds of fuel from an Omega K-707 tanker aircraft. This test serves as another example of the Navy's ability to seamlessly integrate unmanned aircraft into the carrier air wing. Naval test pilots use magic carpet to safely land on board a carrier at sea. The Maritime Augmented Guidance with Integrated Controls for Carrier Approach and Recovery Precision Enabling Technologies, or MAGIC Carpet, is designed to reduce pilot workload and make landings easier. The system incorporates direct lift control and an improved heads-up display to reduce landing variability and improve carrier touchdown performance, even in adverse conditions. In April, Naval Air Warfare Center Aircraft Division test pilots used MAGIC Carpet to conduct multiple at-sea landings on USS George H.W. Bush. It definitely makes a lot safer. Um, I flew about 30 touch and goes in a two hour period and I don't think I would have had the mental capacity to be able to do that safely if it wasn't for this technology. In addition to increasing safety, the system is expected to save on training costs for carrier landing safety officers. Production level software for the fleet is scheduled to start fleet testing in 2017. The Naval Air Systems Command catapulted into history after testing aircraft launch technology more than 60 years in the making. The crew of pre-commissioning unit Gerald R. Ford used the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, or EMOL, to hurl dead load sleds representing various aircraft weights off the ship. EMOLs offer several advantages over the current steam-based catapults. The newer system can handle a wider range of aircraft weights, expanding the Navy's future shipboard launch capabilities. EMOLS is designed to reduce the workload on sailors and the removal of steam means crew members will enjoy cooler and quieter working conditions. Data collected from dead load launches from sea and shore will be used as the basis for the first launch of an actual test aircraft in 2016. The Naval Air Systems Command welcomed a new leader to the helm. Vice Admiral Paul Grossklags assumed command in October during a ceremony at Naval Air Station Patuxent River. Vice Admiral Grossklags spoke to the attending crowd about readiness, affordability and NAVAIR's duty to serve the fleet. All priorities he reinforced with the release of his commander's intent. You'll hear me talk about two things primarily. The first is current readiness and the second is our ability to afford our future. The capability and the capacity of our aircraft and our weapons systems in the future. And I think this is, a, quite honestly, for the entire organization, this is a crucial point in time as we try and address this current readiness issue, but also at the same time focus on our future and what capabilities we need to get out to our sailors and marines. You can see the full Commander's Intent video by visiting our website at www.navair.navy.mil forward slash news. 2015 marks the 70th anniversary for the United States Naval Test Pilot School. 
Opened in 1943 at Naval Air Station Patuxent River, Maryland, it's one of the four major test pilot schools in the world. Hundreds of Navy, Marine Corps, Army, Air Force and international aviators and engineers have graduated from TPS, including 87 U.S. astronauts. The anniversary serves as a reflection on the past and a look ahead to the next chapter in Naval Flight Test Training. For the first time in history, the school adopted live virtual constructive simulation exercise technology into its end-of-the-year capstone project. LVC combines live and virtual assets in a simulated environment, which allows pilots to train in a wide variety of operational scenarios. And speaking of simulation training, 2015 also marked the 30th anniversary of Navier's manned flight simulator facility at Naval Air Station Patuxent River. Every aircraft is essential for fleet operations. That's why when one is down for maintenance, sailors must work quickly to get it back in the air again. The Electric Consolidated Automated Support System, or ECAS, offers the Navy a standardized way to test and repair avionics. Measuring just six feet wide, ECAS can easily fit on an aircraft carrier and offers sailors and marines the ability to detect and diagnose aircraft issues at sea. Performing maintenance on site increases fleet readiness and saves on cost. The modernized system is faster and more reliable than the legacy CAS system and will expand the current test capabilities to include new and future aircraft platforms. The ECAS is still in low-rate initial production. USS Theodore Roosevelt is scheduled to be the first carrier to receive ECAS in FY18. Fleet Readiness Center Southeast marks 75 years of service with a better way to do business. The goal? To decrease work in progress and get aircraft back on the flight line faster. It's all part of the Navy's FA-18 Service Life Extension Program. The military depot is tasked with overhauling Fleet Hornets to extend the aircraft's life cycle from 6,000 to as much as 10,000 flight hours. More than 50% of the Navy's older Hornets are in an out-of-reporting state, which impacts fleet readiness. With so many aircraft in need of an overhaul, FRC Southeast adopted a business methodology called Critical Chain Project Management, which is already proving successful at other FRCs. The whole idea is you focus on a small set of aircraft that you can work today, get those aircraft through the system, and then bring the next aircraft in. And it's, and it's my belief that what we need to do is take it across all aircraft lines, all component lines, all engine lines, to be able to get the maximum amount of throughput for quite frankly what is a reduced set of resources. But we can do that. And that's what, that's what excites me about this whole thing is, is we're seeing results today. If you would like to learn more about the FRC's efforts to overhaul aircraft for the fleet, visit the NAVAIR news page at www.navair.navy.mil forward slash news. The Marine Corps is one step closer to fielding its newest heavy lift helicopter. The CH-53K King Stallion entered flight test phase upon completing a 30-minute hover at the Sikorsky Flight Center in West Palm Beach, Florida. The aircraft performed as expected during its first flight, which examined the helicopter's controllability and landing capability. The CH-53K is the heavy lift replacement for the CH-53E. Designed to lift 14 tons and operate in extremely hot environments, the King Stallion will expand the fleet's ability to move Marines and material rapidly throughout an expanded mission area. The CH-53K program is currently on track to provide an initial operating capability in 2019, with a procurement objective of 200 helicopters. It's proud the skies for close to 50 years. Now the service life of the EA-6B is coming to a close. Nicknamed the Flying Frying Pan, the Prowler was first flown in 1968 and has served the fleet in every war since Vietnam. Recently, artisans at Fleet Readiness Center Southeast in Jacksonville, Florida, completed repairs on their final Prowler. The group has maintained the aircraft since 1994. The last Navy Prowler returned from their final deployment in November. The Navy is moving on to the EA-18G Growler, but the Marines will continue to field the Prowler until 2019. And that's it for this year-in-review edition of Airwaves. See you on the flight line.